Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be doing the first official video on Feroxanes and Ferrazanes. I want to give a huge thank you to my Templus Dollar Patrons and just specifically for this project, just everybody who's helping me out because this is a huge project and I've already spent, I don't want to tell you how much I've spent on it, but I've spent a lot of money and I have a feeling it's also going to be a lot of time. Oh, also, I got a new mic, so um, my voiceovers are finally going to sound consistent and good. Okay, so this project I officially started planning right after I finished the uh, Bytrazals project, which was the, uh, the last huge project that I did. And now I'm actually going to start it after I've done all this preparation. So um, uh, the first synthesis that we're going to do is the Feroxane. Now, Feroxanes are a little more powerful than Ferozanes, usually significantly more in some cases, but um, that's what we're going to start with first because I have all the precursors for that one right now. So reading through the paper, it's in the description below, I was reading about all the precursors that I needed and uh, I read that I needed oleum. Now oleum kind of caught me off guard because oleum is that one uh, chemical that nobody wants to work with because it fumes sulfuric acid fumes, it burns through everything organic, and it carbonizes everything it touches. So essentially, I didn't want to work with it because that would mean that I'd have to make pure sulfur trioxide and then put sulfuric acid in it to dissolve it, to make oleum, and I don't want to do that. However, I thought about it some more and I realized when have obscure chemicals ever stopped me? It doesn't work. It's just a nasty red solution. I wasted it smells all of it like trying to recover it. This and stupid waste of all my course, it just ends up being this oily stuff that all. sticks to all my glassware, very, very ruins it, stains everything with iodine, and smells so horrible. The point where I stop it is when it gets all clogged up. Whoa. I think I just had a PTSD flashback. Anyways, let's get back to the video. So first things first, we have to make our sulfur trioxide. And to do this, I have this glassware set up right here and it ended up working perfectly. So I'm very happy that it kind of went by without a hitch. So here, as you see, is everything set up. I have my phosphorus pentoxide. I have my uh, sulfuric acid dripping in and I have my uh, trap so that I don't have to breathe a bunch of sulfuric acid clouds. So now I'm just going to start additions. I have uh, my stopcock closed because I'm not going to forget it this time and I'm just going to start slowly dripping it in. Uh, one thing that I noticed is that it is not very exothermic uh, initially. Even after adding all the sulfuric acid it wasn't boiling so what I did was heat it up and then as you can see it actually starts to boil. Looking back at my lab notes I actually had to heat this mixture to between 150 to 200 celsius to even get it to start boiling which I find kind of insane but I mean it worked, so I can't really complain. This is what the solution looked like right when the uh, actual SO3 started to come over, and you could see that it was bubbling not very vigorously, not like the dinitrogen pentoxide. It was pretty, uh, it's pretty tame, and uh, you can see a little bit of sulfur trioxide at the bottom. I started to get a little worried when I saw that forming at the end because I did not want pressure building up, especially in this reaction, so I grabbed a blowtorch and I uh, melted it off. So once I finished the distillation, I was ready to put it into a uh, short-term storage. So I double gloved, put on my lab coat, put on my face shield, and put on my respirator to have maximum safety because sulfur trioxide is not something that you want to mess with. So when I was ready, I pulled off the uh, flask and then I quickly capped it as soon as I could to try to minimize the amount of sulfuric acid clouds in the air. I don't have the greatest angle, but you can see how much uh, sulfuric acid smoke is released by the small amount of time it's opened. Once the cap is on, I can breathe again, literally and figuratively, and I throw it in the ice bath to minimize sublimation. Um, now I have to deal with the entire apparatus just smoking, as you can see. Now this isn't your run-of-the-mill smoke. Since this smoke is literally just sulfuric acid, it's like breathing in hell. So yeah, your lungs won't exactly like it. I'll play the clip sound so you can hear what this water makes when it touches the SO3. Listen to that. Oh my god. Here's a cool effect that I saw when I opened up the cap when cleaning this glassware. Anyways, now that I have my um, pure sulfur trioxide, it's time to turn it into 65% oleum. 
face mask, everything. So now we need to open it. Shoot. Wow, the ice is melting. Yep, that's good. Okay, you're good. We're good. Now that I'm ready for additions, I add a little bit at first just to see how exothermic this is, and it ends up being not exothermic, like, at all. However, I still proceed with caution because the last thing I need is sulfuric anhydride, or oleum, splashing in my face. God damn it, why do I even do this stuff? Now that all the sulfuric uh, acid has been added, we actually need to melt the sulfur trioxide because the sulfur trioxide is coating the walls and the sulfuric acid is at the very bottom. Also, I think that the sulfur trioxide is slightly polymerized because it had a very hard time dissolving in the uh, sulfuric acid. So I again whip out the blowtorch and just start blasting away, but I am careful and I make sure to let the gas out because you do not want pressure building up. I'm not a fan of my stoppers just shooting out. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's all melted and mostly dissolved. There's a little bit of polymerized junk in there. Well, it's not junk, it's sulfur trioxide, but I do get it to dissolve eventually. It is a little brown, but that's because of some, you know, organic contamination. But honestly, it doesn't matter. It's probably just carbon. And uh, yeah, so now I need to dilute it a little further because the reaction that I'm using it for calls for around 30% oleum when what I have is 65. So here is my final product, the around 30% uh, oleum. So let's test it on paper compared to normal sulfuric acid to see if we even have proper oleum. On another note, um, all the weird polymerized SO3 is dissolved, so it's homogenous. Here's some sulfuric acid. You can see that it destroys it uh, very quickly. It's already destroyed. Now let's try some oleum. Okay, so here's some of the oleum. Oh boy. Whew. Yeah, I don't want to mess with that stuff. Now we're going to move on over to the second part of this video and make dioxane. This one is 1,4-dioxane, and you might be thinking, oh, that's just making a solvent, it's not that bad. I don't want to work with the tar. The tar that 1,4-dioxane leaves behind is not fun, nobody likes it, and that seems to be what everybody hates about the synthesis. I didn't really want to do it, but I ended up having to. Nonetheless, here we are. So. I'm taking around 400 milliliters of ethylene glycol, and that's going to be our reactant. Also, if you're wondering why my video is filmed vertically, you can thank my friend for that one. Alright, so to the 400 milliliters of ethylene glycol, we're going to pour in 40 milliliters of impure sulfuric acid. This is going to make so much tar when it's done. <laughs> yeah, that's why you're cleaning it, not me. So now that we got the mixture that will soon be tar, I'm just going to, uh, hold up, I'm gonna get myself turning on the heat. So I'm not gonna go in depth with this video because there are a lot of dioxane synthesis videos, so I'm just gonna gloss over everything and skip to the end. And this is where most of the dioxane is coming over, the solution's tarring up, it's all going well. This is what it looks like when everything is distilled over and there is so much tar. To sum up purification, I just redistill it to get both water and acetaldehyde out while just getting mostly the dioxane water azeotrope. And then to purify it further, I put in a bunch of potassium hydroxide, which polymerizes everything else that's not dioxane and pulls the water out, so it has a double purpose. Once it's all pulled out, so that's like a day or two later, I use a separatory funnel to separate the water layer from the dioxane layer. Once I have just the dioxane layer, I put in sodium metal into the just pure dioxane now. And, well, it's not pure, it's got a bunch of stuff in it, but to the mostly dioxane, and I leave it for a few days to completely dry it up. Once it's completely dry, 
which you know when you don't see many bubbles coming from the sodium, I redistill it one last time and I get my very clear and pure dioxane. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I'm going to have another video up kind of soon because I actually already finished filming it. I just have to edit it down. I have to find the time to do that. But uh, my f uh, video should be coming out a little faster than they were before. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time.